Hello again. Not for the first time, Eastern Europe shows us how the problem of illegal immigration can actually be tackled. Their methods do not entail providing a free taxi service to collect immigrants and then providing them indefinitely with hotel rooms and free meals. Which, of course, is how the British Home Secretary evidently supposes such waves of Africans, Bengalis and Arabs can be deterred. No, Poland has now declared a state of emergency and begun sealing off their border with coils of razor wire. That, combined with lines of troops, seems to be doing the trick. What I found very interesting, although also shocking, are the numbers involved. According to the Polish government, there were 3,500 attempts to cross the border illegally in August, 2,500 of which were prevented. In other words, roughly a 1,000 people managed actually to get across the border without going through the usual formalities of arriving at a border crossing and showing their passports. You know, the sort of things that people like you and me do when we're visiting another country. It is this number of unwanted immigrants which has prompted Poland to declare the first state of emergency since the collapse of communism in 1989. A thousand illegal immigrants are rightly seen as a grave situation. What about Britain? How are we doing on the illegal immigrant front? In just two days last month, namely the 12th and 21st of August, a total of 1,420 illegal immigrants crossed the Channel and landed on English beaches. Which of the two countries, Britain or Poland, would you say has the greatest crisis when it comes to illegal immigrants flooding across their borders? The Polish government obviously recognised something which has apparently escaped the notice of Boris Johnson and his chums, which is that one of the first, if not the first, duty of the government of a sovereign nation is to protect the integrity of the country's borders. If you neglect that vital step, then anybody might invade you, and before you know it, you will no longer have a country at all. It matters little in the long run whether the people marching across your border are enemy soldiers or hordes of civilians numbering in the millions. Without a secure and defensible border, one cannot really talk of a sovereign nation at all. Hungary recognised this in 2015, when other countries uh, in the Balkans were being overrun by an army of young men, most of whom were Muslims. They too, just like Poland, erected stout fences and mobilised their armed forces. They knew that if they allowed tens of thousands of homeless Muslims to enter their territory, then it would prove almost impossible to get rid of them in the future, and so they determined not to let them in in the first place. If these two countries, Hungary and Poland, which have very long land borders, can take effective measures of this sort to prevent an invasion of foreigners likely to cause irreparable harm to the nature of their civilization and culture, how much easier should it be for Britain, which is an island with no land borders, to put a stop to this illegal activity? These people are not refugees or asylum seekers. If they were, then they would apply for asylum in France or any of the other European countries through which they have passed. That they have not done so, preferring to travel through a dozen safe countries before attempting to enter Britain illegally, tells me that they are in fact economic migrants in search of a higher standard of living than that which they might enjoy in their own country. This relieves us of the need to worry about turning them away from our shores because they are safe in France and seek asylum there if they wish. How could we stop these crossings, the largest of which was over 800 people in a single day of August the 21st? Obviously mining a channel would not be a practical course of action 
owing to the great commercial traffic which passes along that waterway. I have an idea though that some fast patrol boats could work wonders if drones were also used to spot when and where small boats left French waters. It would then be possible to bar their entry or tow them back to France. I've no doubt at all that such methods would make a great difference, especially if combined with transporting all those who did manage to land to a remote location such as Ascension Island and processing any claim for asylum there rather than in Britain. There are no obstacles to adopting a more robust policy in this matter other than the weakness of this present government and their anxiety not to be seen as heartless and cruel. Time is fast running out though and if we delay much longer then the tipping point will be reached and Britain will for all practical purposes cease to be a European nation.